Hi, it's Lydia. Welcome to the first video tutorial for the Codal Summer School course on visualizing language data for analysis and communication. In this first tutorial, I'll introduce you to the different tools that we'll be using to build visualizations. And then we're going to build a super simple demonstration of some vowel sounds. I'm going to be taking you to a few different websites and I'll read out the site addresses as I type them so you can type along if you want to. But there's also links in the description for this video if you'd rather click to follow the links. To start with, we're going to go to the site for the visualization tool that we'll be using, which is called Vega. So if we type vga.github, g i t h u b dot i o forward slash vega forward slash we come to the home page for vega a visualization grammar now there are lots of different tools that you can use to build visualizations i've chosen vega for a few reasons firstly it lets us just describe the visualization in high level terms without needing to get down into the detail of the codes. It can create a really large range of visualizations. You can browse some examples here on this website and it lets us do a whole lot of quite advanced things like have interaction, have filtering, create a huge variety of visualizations. And it's also really easy for us to export the visualizations that we make using Vega. So I encourage you to have a look around the website. You can have a look at the tutorials that the Vega creators have made, have a look at some of the examples, and if you're into coding, have a look at the documentation. The second tool that we're going to be using is a tool called Observable. So if we type in beta, B-E-T-A, dot observable, O-B-S-E-R-V-A-B-L-E, H-Q, dot com, and press enter, we come to the Observable homepage. Now I really encourage you again to have a look around this homepage. There's a great series of introductions to explaining what Observable is and introducing you to the range of things that it can be used for beyond what we'll be using it for in these tutorials. The basic idea of Observable is that it's a notebook for combinations of text and uh, code. And that means that you can do some coding, but you can also explain some coding. You can take some notes and do some calculations, and then you can share that with other people. The really neat feature about Observable is that once a notebook is published, anyone can come and look at it and add their own notes or edit their code uh, in the way that they want to, and Observable automatically creates a new version of them. So say you're doing these tutorials in the middle of a really boring meeting and an action comes up for you, you can say, oh, okay, I've got to call the person about the thing. And then while you're in the middle of doing this tutorial, you can still make notes for yourself. And then save all of these notes in your own private version of this notebook by doing what's called a fork of the notebook. In order to save your versions of notebooks and be able to create your own notebooks to publish them so others can see them, you need to sign up for Observable. Because Observable's in the beta stage, the way that they're doing that is by getting people to create a GitHub account and then using that GitHub account to log into Observable. So to do that, you go to github.com if you don't already have a, a Git account, so that's g-i-t-h-u-b.com. 
follow the bouncing ball to sign up. And then once you go to back to the observable homepage, it's really easy to follow the links up here to sign into observable. So once you've created an account, uh, we're going to be working off some notebooks that I made for this course. So all of my notebooks are under at Lilia Sieber forward slash and then the notebook that we're going to be working on is codal hyphen ss18 hyphen getting started with hyphen in the middle hyphen workbook this workbook contains everything that you'll need to get started and build your first, first visualization using vega at the top, I have a brief explanation of what the workbook is about, as well as the links to the video tutorial you're watching right now, and the main observable page and the Vega homepage that we've just looked at. I've also got a link here to the finished version of the visualization that we're going to build that you can have a look at over here and you can go and check that anytime if you get stuck writing the code you can hop across and compare to my version so if we look at the cells of this notebook we have introduction we have over here something called a spec we have a cell called viz, some more text explaining where the data is from. We have the data set and a little bit about the embed function that you don't need to worry about. So if we look at the data, this video series is focusing on the technical aspect of visualization. That is, how do we make data into a visual representation? If you're coming to the sessions at the Codal Summer School, we're going to talk there about visualization meaning and uh, in particular talk about the different messages that design choices convey. One important aspect of those, that design choice is the choice of the data set you use, how much you process that data away from the raw collected data, and how you maintain transparency about how the data has been processed and transformed. But for now, what we're interested in is the format of the data. So this data set shows us two important data structures, both of which are used in the Vega specification. The first is, if we have a look, we have a pair of square brackets around the whole of the data set. Square brackets in JavaScript mean that it's an array of data or information. An array is basically a list of things, and you can see a better representation of that in that line above that says array 11, object, comma, object, comma, object. So it's an ordered list of things one after the other. The second type of data structure that we have in this data set is a JavaScript object. Each of these pairs of curly brackets make up what's called an object, consisting of pairs of properties and the property value. So for these objects, the properties are val, f1, f2, and f3. And for our first object in our array, the property, say f1, has the value 285. 
So to visualize this data set, what we're going to do is we're going to write what's called a Vega specification. And then we're going to feed it into the embed function that we have down here. And that's going to create the HTML code for us. So these other cells in the observable notebook, I've set up the sort of skeleton that we're going to need to do that. So here we have what I've called spec, which is uh, the skeleton of the Vega specification that we're going to fill in. And then the cell called viz, if we open it up, we can see called it the name viz and said that it's equal to the embed function running that specification up here. So as we add things to the spec, we're occasionally going to go in and go into this viz cell. So click on the carrot, go into this viz cell, press shift, shift enter or the arrow key over here and that's going to update our visualization and we'll be able to see the changes that we've done to the Vega specification. So if we look at the specification, we can see that inside a pair of brackets, we have everything enclosed in a pair of curly brackets. That means that the specification is a JavaScript object. And if we look, we can see we've got a list of properties and then the colons tell us the values for those properties. So we have a property called schema, and this is setting which version of Vega we're going to use. We don't need to worry about this. We just need to leave that at the top. We have a property called width, which is currently set to 400 pixels. We have a property called height, which is currently set to zero pixels. We're gonna change that very shortly. Property called title, property called data, property called scales, property called mark, and property called axes. And most of these properties, when we look across at the values, I've given you an indication of the kind of value that we're expected to add. Some of them are just a single value like in our data set with a number or a string, which is enclosed in quotation marks. But many of them are closed bra uh, closed brackets, square brackets, which means that they are going to be arrays. You might see here we have two other properties, projections and legends, that I've put uh, a pair of forward slashes in front of. These are properties that you can have in a Vega specification, and there's a couple of others that I haven't listed to, but we're not going to add them for this project. So the basics that we need to create a visualization are uh, we need to specify at least a size, a width and a height for our plot. We need to add at least one data set, add some scales, which I'll talk about in a bit, add some marks, which are the visual shapes or symbols that display the data, and then we can add some axes which will explain to the reader, the viewer, how those visual marks translate back into data values. So the first thing we're going to do is add our data set and start. Next to the property that says data, we see the colon and we see the square brackets. Inside the square brackets, we're going to add the curly brackets for a JavaScript object. And then to make some space for ourselves, I'm just going to press enter. And then go to a line in between both the curly brackets and those square brackets. The nice thing about both arrays and uh, objects is it doesn't matter how the lines split inside the brackets. 
the JavaScript code just looks for when those brackets start and end. So the first thing we have to add for our data set is we have to give it a name. So to do that, we type brackets, name, not brackets, quotation marks, name, colon, and then we can choose any name we like. I'm going to call it valves. This name lets us refer to the data in other parts of the Vega specification. Then after the name property, we put a comma to show that that's the end of the value for that property. And for convenience, I'll move to a new line. The next property that we want to add is the actual data itself. We're going to file that under values. So we're going to quotation marks again, type values, colon, and then we're going to go scroll down to the bottom of our specification and see what we've named this data array. And that's called ink underscore valves. So that's what we're going to type in here, eng underscore vowels. And if we've typed it correctly, we should see it go change color from gray to dark blue. Because it's a variable and not a text value, we haven't put quotation marks around that. So that's our data set added. There's, instead of adding the values, there's other ways that you can add data. In particular, you can uh, use the property URL and load from an external website if you know the URL of a data in appropriate form. But values is one of the simplest and easiest ways. The next thing that we're going to add is we're going to give the plot some height. So we're going to change the zero into 300 and that will make our plot 300 pixels. We just press shift enter now you'll see that underneath the specification we're adding this viz cell has suddenly got a whole lot taller this tells us that our code is working so fast so next we're going to add the scales just as we did with data we're going to add some curly brackets to add a new javascript object make some space and then our scales also need a name. So the first scale I'm going to use to translate from our F2 value into the horizontal space of the plot. So I'm going to give it the name horizontal so that I remember what it does. The second thing a scale needs is a domain. The domain is the data value that are being translated into visual values. So in this case, we're going to give it data values. So what we do is we create another JavaScript object, add the property data. We tell it this name that we gave our data set, val, remembering to use quotation marks, add a comma, and then we have to tell it the field name. Now we don't have, because we don't have the data set actually in here, to look up the field names, we're just gonna scroll back down to where we have our data set. And we're going to look, it's going to be field F2. After the curly brackets for that, we have to type the property name there is field colon F2. Now after that object, for the data and the field, we're going to put a comma in line and our scale also needs a range. So this is telling us the visual value 
that we're translating into. And in this case, we can use our shortcut and we can just tell it to translate our data values into the width of the plot by typing the word width with quotation marks around. If I just highlight that, that's a scale that we've created called horizontal. But we need a second scale as well. We want to translate the other form of the F1 property into vertical position. So to do that, we're going to add a second object. And this is showing us the reason why these Vega specifications use arrays as their values. Because it's an array, we can just keep adding as many scales as we like, so long as we separate each scale, it's object defining the scale with a comma. So we add a comma, add a new line just to make things easy to read, and then we're going to add another pair of curly brackets. Just going to even up the spacing. And add some space. And this one, we're going to give it the name colon vertical. Comma. Going to give it the domain. Again, we're going to use draw that domain from our data set the data with the name bounds and look this time we're going to look at the field F1 and then for our range we're going to use the height ta-da Two scales, one that maps from the F2 property to the horizontal, and one that maps from the F1 property to the vertical. To use these scales, we have to add some visual marks. So just as before, we're going to add an object. We can give it a name, but we don't need to. We're just going to jump right into giving it a type. So Vega lets you define a range of types of marks from symbols, text, um, bars like you'd use in a bar chart, lines, areas, and uh, what's called paths. For this, we're gonna use the symbol mark. So next to our property type, we're going to put the value symbol in quotation marks and then put a comma. We use the property from to tell the JavaScript, I mean the Vega specification, that these marks are, are created from the data. So for every entry in our data set, we're going to create a new item of this mark. So it's from, and then we need an object from the data, which is called bounds. And then we're going to do what's called encoding. So we type the property encode colon and it's an object now the encode property is an object and it has three stages enter update and exit the enter property tells you how to first create the the mark the update tells you what to do if you make any changes using interactions and the exit tells you what to do if you remove the mark for some reason. We're only going to need to use the enter property for now. 
So that's the only one that we need to specify. So we type property enter, and then that's also a JavaScript object. So on the enter, this is where we're going to add all of the things that we want the mark to look like. And if I just scroll down so it's further in view, the first thing that we want to define are the actual position. So we want to make use of these scales that we've created. So horizontal position in Vega is called the X position. We type X colon, and then we're going to type a JavaScript object and property is going to be scale. And then we tell it which scale we're going to be using. We're going to be using the scale called horizontal. And then we also have to tell it which field of this data set vowels we want it to apply that horizontal scale to. In this case, it's going to be the field. F2. Comma at the end of that object and new line. And then we do the same for the vertical position, which is called Y in Vega. And for speed, I'm just going to copy that across. I'm going to change the scale name to vertical. Change the field name to F1. We have a comma at the end already, so then we can add one more thing, which is to make it appear. We're going to give it a color using the property fill, the colon, and we're going to just give it a straight value. So we use the property value, colon, and then you can either use a hex code if you know hex code for color values, or you can use any of the HTML color names, which you can get to just by Googling the term HTML color name. I'm going to use the color corn flower blue because I like it. But uh, any color like red, blue, green, black, gray, white, um, HTML knows how to translate those basic terms into a color value, though they're not usually very attractive colors. So once we've done that, we have our set of marks, we have some scales. Let's press Shift Enter and see whether we've successfully created a visualization. <gasps> we scroll down, we have some points and they're arranged in space. So this means we've successfully encoded our English Vowels data set into vertical and horizontal positions based on their F1, F2 values. Hurrah, good job us. A slight problem, we can't tell which point corresponds to which data, and we also can't tell exactly what values they are. So to be able to tell which point corresponds to which vowel, we're going to add a second mark. So what we're going to do is add a comma just before the end of the marks array, make some space, and then I'm going to copy this whole mark here, the JavaScript object for that mark, and paste it in here. 
Now, to show the vowel value, instead of using a symbol, I'm going to use the mark type text. We still want it to appear at the same x, y position, so we can, and we still want to pull from our data set vowel, so we can leave the from data vowels unchanged, we can use, leave the x and the y value unchanged. We'll use a different color, we'll tell it to just be black, and then in addition to all of these properties, we need to add a text property to tell it what text to type. And here we're going to add the value field, I mean the property field, and we're going to give it the value, scroll down to our data set, and it's called val, and notice that we have a capital V at the start of val. Press shift enter, and scroll down, we can have a look. Hurrah! We can now see the um, text version of each of our vowels. But they're not very big and it's a little bit hard to tell the difference between the point and the vowel. So I'm going to add back up in our symbol mark, I'm going to add a property called opacity colon and give it a value, you can give it any value between zero and one. Zero is completely transparent and one is completely opaque. So I'm going to give it the value 0.3, but that's going to make it still visible but very faint and then I might give it a size as well and make it a bit bigger so that we can have the symbol and then the text sitting on top of that symbol so let's try a value of 300. What does that look like? That looks pretty good. But you'll notice that if we look at the text, firstly, the text is a little bit small to be able to read it clearly, but also each text point is not sitting dead center of, of our uh, circle symbols. The reason this is, is because uh, text is in Vega the assumption that, that the creators have made is that texts are labels that you might want sitting off to the side of points. To make them appear right in the center of the points, we have to change some of their properties. Now it gets hard to remember off the top of your head all of the properties for, uh, for, for the marks, but fortunately there's some easy ways that we can look it up. When we go over to this, set of uh, circle with ellipses in here. This gives us the options for how we download our chart either as an SVG or as a PNG or we can do something called open in the Vega editor. If we click that link this takes us to the Vega tool. What we can do then is we can go up to the top right hand corner click this symbol that says Vega dot and this opens us up to the Vega documentation. It's the, um, the guidebook for all of the different properties that you can put in the Vega specification and all of their allowable values. So if we scroll down and we find over on the left the item called marks, trace it click on that, scroll down again, we see a list of all the marks that we can have. And if we go to our text mark, this jumps us to a handy little reference um, that has 
the example and see this text label side text label over here and you can see next to the red point the text label is a little bit up and a little bit over to the right just like we have in our points so what we can do is we can play around with these this is moving the whole point as well as the text label this is swinging our text around if we want to We can make our text bigger or smaller, make our text limit the number of characters in our text, no, the pixel size. And we can use this align center. Now we're talking, this has moved our text to the center instead of being over to the right. And we can move our baseline into the middle perfect so we need to use a property align with the value center and a property baseline with the value middle text add a comma align with a value uh, center American spelling and baseline colon with a value of middle and let's make it a little bit larger as well so if we go back to our reference we see oh we have this font size so 16 17 that looks like a good size font and it was a capital s for size and value for numbers we don't need to use quotation marks we can just type 16. press shift shift enter or go up to the little triangle at the top here to run our specification and if we scroll down we see hurrah we have nice centered text inside nice blue bubbles I might just make a little bit bigger and a little bit bluer I like so we've fixed half our problem. We have points arranged in space and we can tell which data point, which val each of our visual points corresponds to. But we can't actually tell what their F1 and F2 values are. To do that, we're going to need to add some axes. Now our axes also use this scale property that we defined earlier because the scales are our uh, magic tool all the way through the Vega specification for translating from our data value into the visual value. So the first thing that we do is you guessed it add a JavaScript object. Inside that JavaScript object we're going to tell the axes which scale we want to use so we'll make the horizontal axis first add a comma and then we're going to tell it where in terms of our plot we want the scale to appear so we use the orient property and we want it to appear at the bottom and finally, we want to be able to tell which of the data fields we've used. So, nearly forgot the comma at the end. We need to add a property title and tell it F2. So, this tells us our horizontal scale. If we press Shift Enter, 
and scroll down, we can see a nice little scale appear has appeared, showing our F2 values and telling us that we are looking at the variable F2. To add a second axis, we're going to add a comma just before the end of our axis array. We'll make some space. Add a new JavaScript object, tell it scale name is vertical. Tell it that the orient property should be, I'm going to put it over on the right, maybe, and I'm going to give it the title. F1. Press Shift Enter and hurrah! Each of our axes has now appeared. Now, when our axis is over the right there, we've got some overlap with one of our vowels and we've got all this empty space over on the left so maybe the axis would be better on the left what we can do is just go back to the specification change the right to left press shift enter again voila axis fixed now this is a pretty good plot there's a few things that we might like to do. You could tweak the color and uh, text size some more. One of the things, you could add a title. So if we go up here, we could add the property text and we could say, tell us something about the text. It's a set of adult male frequencies of English vowels. Let's add that. Enter. See when that works. Ta-da! Title appears. Nice capital at the start. And we have a very neat plot. So feel free to play around with any of these values. Um, go over to the Vega documentation, see some of the other types of marks that you could use, some of the other properties, both of the text mark or of the symbol mark that we've used. Um, you can see that you can change if you want to uh, the shape and play around with that plot. And if you want to compare at any time to the one that I've created, follow the link at the top of the page to my version of the visualization here. So thank you very much for watching. This has been the first of the tutorials for visualizing data for analyzing and communicating languages. I'll be back soon to let you know much, much more that you can do with Vega and Observable. That's it from me. Remember that you can subscribe to this YouTube channel to keep updated on all the new videos as they come in. See you soon.